this is Beyond Film School and I'm Amber and in this video we are diving into the amazing world of the assistant editor. Before we jump into the video about the assistant editor, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the videos I make on the film industry. Be sure to hit that PayPal link to donate to Beyond Film School if you are in support of what I do. If you like this video, if you want to support my channel, you can hit up that link and it will be greatly appreciated because you are keeping this YouTuber going and I have to say thank you to everyone that's contributed already. All right, let's get into the assistant editor, shall we? If you're watching this video, it is safe to assume that you want to become an editor and you probably heard of the position, the assistant editor, and you're probably like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this assistant editor business? So we're gonna jump into what is an assistant editor. Well, let me start by saying that the assistant editor is going to be your entry level position in the post production department. And you should know this, it is a very, very technical job, but there are some creative aspects to it as well. The assistant editor is the preparer, the preparer of, projects, of projects, the labeler, the labeler of, files, of files, and the and sinker the of, dailies. of dailies. Now, dailies is a word you might not know, and there's gonna be some vocabulary in this video that I will have to cover. And the dailies are basically the footage you get for that day. It's not edited, it's just raw takes of what was shot that day. Hence why they're called dailies, because more and more footage will come in on a daily basis when working on a project. All right, let's jump into the responsibilities and duties of an assistant editor. The the overall responsibility of the assistant editor is to get everything ready for the editor so they can come into the editing bay, sit right down, and start cutting together the project. The assistant editor supports the editor. Supports the editor. Okay, so we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty. And for example, let's just use you are an assistant editor and you are working on a feature film and on day one, what are you gonna be doing on day one after lunch from the feature film set, there is going to be a lovely media card coming from set over to the post house and you're gonna start downloading that footage and you're gonna start labeling all the files to make sure whatever was on the slate for that shot is going to be actually in the file name for each shot. Labeling files is super important because it helps a project stay organized during the post-production process. So we're still on day one of that feature film project we started, right? So at the end of the first day, you're gonna get the second half of the footage from the camera department as well as the sound files. And that is when you are going to start syncing the files. Now remember that camera and audio is captured on two different spaces. They're not together already. Camera's gonna be on one media card and sound, and all the sound files, audio, dialogue, wild sound, wild lines are gonna be on another card, most likely an SD card. Those cards are gonna come to the post house and that is when you have to bring those two things together and make sure that they are synced up. And what does synced up mean? Synced up is basically how you are seeing me right now. I am in sync, you are hearing the audio, my mouth is moving at the correct frame rate and you are seeing it live. Like you're like, my mouth is moving correctly to what you are hearing. This is what it's like when you are out of sync. You can hear the words that I'm saying, but it does not match up with my mouth and my movements. Okay, there we go, we are back in sync. Not only are you just going to get the camera footage and the sound files, but you are also going to get the script supervisor notes. Those notes are super important because the script supervisor or scripty is basically the eyes of the editors. They're the eyes of post-production. So they are pretty much your representative on set. With those notes, you're gonna take those notes and you have to put them on the clip. Each clip is gonna have a bunch of notes on them. So is the take useful? Is it out of focus? And you are gonna make a note to make sure the editor knows not to waste their time on that clip. Within the script supervisor notes, there is going to be notation on whether or not the director likes that take, if it's his or her favorite take. And that is really good for the editor to know to make sure that maybe, yes, that shot, that take is going to be included in the edit. With each file as an assistant editor, you may also be making digital marks on that file, meaning from this point to that point, this is the juicy bit that you want. Because maybe sometimes on set, they like to, you know, keep it rolling, still rolling. I do a couple takes within a certain shot. So maybe there's a nice bit in there that's like, yes, this is gonna be what you want, editor, and I want you to know that. So you're making digital markers on that clip. And if you're working in documentary, 
documentary or reality, you're you're kind of making the note and you're marking it down and it says, yes, this is where they fight, or this is when the drama happens. I think this is a really, really important one because assistant editors are going to be making proxy media. Proxy media is going to be low resolution files, meaning they're gonna be smaller files, not necessarily less quality, sometimes that is the case, but it is a smaller file that the computer and the editor have to deal with while cutting everything together. Keep in mind that everything that's shot now is basically gonna be 4K, 6K, or like 8K now, it's pretty crazy, but that is a lot of data and that creates a big giant file and sometimes dealing with that on a daily basis takes too much time, takes too much processing power for a computer. So proxy media is very, very important to be used during the editing process because it just goes a little bit faster. So making proxy media is very, very important for the post-production department. Okay, so now we're getting into some really deep details. So like I said before, that your job is to make sure that everything is ready to go for the editor when they decide to sit down and they can just go into a project and start cutting everything together. Now, a lot of what I said, <laughs> there's a lot of detail in that. You're going to make sure that there is an actual project file so the editor can open it up. You're going to make sure that there are certain folders with all the C numbers on it and every take is going to be in each allotted folder. Everything's labeled. You have to make sure that they have all the materials they need within the project file. So that means you're actually going to create a file within Avid or Adobe Premiere and so it's ready to go for the editor. You you want to make sure the editor isn't going to be searching around for certain footage for a certain scene that he or she may be on editing right at that moment. So everything's there, ready to go. So I know that was a lot of technical responsibilities for the assistant editor, so I'm going to switch up a little bit. We're going to talk about the creative responsibilities and duties. And this is kind of a cool one because when you start to actually become a seasoned assistant editor, then the editor will trust you a little bit more and then you're gonna actually be making an assembly cut of a project. An assembly cut is going to be a really, really rough cut of a project. And it's pretty much putting all the footage together according to the script. Now, this is for when the editor really trusts you and you've, you're basically on your way moving up. He or she will give you a whole scene to edit and that scene will be in the final cut. So for example, if I were an editor and there might be a montage in the project or the movie or whatever, I would give that montage to my assistant editor to do because I mean, putting montages together are pretty fun and it's pretty easy. That was a little bit of the creative side to the assistant editor. Now we're gonna go back to the technical because an important job of an assistant editor is going to be collecting certain components for a project that come from other departments within post-production. And that could be the score from the composer, that could be animation, that could be graphics, that could be visual effects. So there's tons of other things that go into an edit and they collect those things and make sure the editor has those. And you can't forget about the color grading. You know, the colorist, they're gonna be giving you some stuff too. Now, as an assistant editor, this is a very, very key role for you. You are going to be handling a lot of exporting and there's a lot of formats and codecs that you have to know to make sure that whatever is required, you have exported properly. Because exporting a project for YouTube, for the web, versus a DCP package, DCP is going to be a digital cinema package that is pretty much what you see when you go to the movies. A DCP package is going to be completely different than something you are going to be exporting for something like Netflix. So keeping all that in mind, exporting is very, very big on the responsibilities list for an assistant editor. You have a lot of responsibility as an assistant editor, but now let's talk about the skills and qualities needed. I'm sure you've gathered this from watching this video already, but you gotta be organized. You have to be organized as an assistant editor because the editor is looking to you to organize that project. Editing is very tedious and there are a lot of different things that go into editing. So you have to have attention to detail as this is an editor, especially when you're talking about organizing a project, labeling certain things. It's very, very tedious and you really have to have that attention to detail. This might be a funny one to some people, but patience. And I think this gets largely overlooked because as this is an editor, you're going to have so much footage and so many files and you you have this like mountain of files to get through and you really have to have the patience and discipline to get through that giant pile of files every day that you may have to sync, label, or take notes on. 
I feel like this is a human thing and this is pretty much for every job, but you may think that being in the post-production department that editing is like a solo thing or the assistant editor is kind of like a solo job, but it's not really true because you're going to be working in close proximity with other assistant editors and other editors and other people who are in the post-production department. So you have to work well with others. So you just gotta work on your people skills. And what makes it more comical is that on the flip side of that, there are going to be moments where you're going to be on your own. Most likely when you first start out as an assistant editor, you're going to be doing overnight, so you're going to be there by yourself sinking footage <laughs> overnight. So you have to have the ability to work with little to no supervision. And they got to make sure you're doing your job. Just because you're not there doesn't mean you don't do your job. So little to no supervision and you know having the discipline to do your job when no one's watching you. I think this is probably the question most of you have is how do I become an assistant editor? And let's jump into that. Now I know I mentioned in the beginning of this video that the assistant editor is the entry level position in post-production when it comes to wanting to become an editor. So it's kind of funny that in order to become an assistant editor, you have to prove that you know how to edit. So you have to have something to show for it. Did you edit commercials that you shot by yourself? Did you cut together a mock trailer of a movie? You have to have some type of reel that people can look at to know that you can actually edit. And lucky for you, if you haven't seen my other videos in the editing series from Beyond Film School, I have a video that talks about what you need in your demo reel. So check that video out, it's gonna be a buff for you if you need to know more about the demo reel for editors. Some assistant editors started out as interns at post-production houses. So if there are any post houses around you, become an intern that gets your foot in the door and then you can possibly move up to assistant editor. When you're an intern at these post-production houses, you're going to be working under assistant editors and you're gonna learn what they know so then you can jump onto that spot one day when they leave and they move up. Not only will this help you become an assistant editor or a better assistant editor, and it will also help you to edit better and therefore be a better editor down the line is you have to know editing theory. Grab some books <laughs> and let's dive into why a certain shot is edited a certain way, why a certain shot is picked over a different shot. You know, editing theory I think is largely overlooked. Some people just wanna cut things together, but you have to keep the human psychology in the mix because people are watching your project. Now I recommend In the Blink of an Eye by Walter Murch. If you want to dive into editing theory, that is definitely the book for you. So definitely check it out. That link will be below for you. Some assistant editors start out as post-production PAs, but that is kind of like not, that's not really a position at every post house. And the post-production PA is sometimes equal to the intern. So it's not always the entry level thing that people think. Like a set PA would be an entry level position onto a film set. It's not necessarily the same in a post-production house setting. Some assistant editors are coming up through the indie world and they're working on indie feature films, music videos, commercials, and they're gaining that experience, putting it on their reel. And a lot of the times when you're in the indie world, you're the only editor. So you are syncing, you are cutting, you are labeling files, you're doing all the things that a big project would do when it's split among a lot of different people. So you can use those to gain experience to hop on something bigger as an assistant editor. We haven't even talked about software yet, so definitely make a point to learn Adobe Premiere Suite. Learn Avid. Those two programs are pretty much the professional programs that people are using in the union world and all over. So learn Take the time to train yourself, watch YouTube tutorials on anything dealing with those programs. Get used to them, love them, make them your best friend. <laughs> because if you don't know those programs, then that's pretty much the basis of your job. And in case you're wondering about salary, which I know you are, because why do we do this? Because we want to make sure we have a good job, we get paid. They're making about $60,000 a year in New York City. Now compare that to the editor, which could be making $78,000 to $150,000 a year. If you wanted more info on the salary of editors, assistant editors across the board, indie or union, there is a survey that Blue Collar Post Collective does every year, and I'll leave that link below for you. It's this giant sized Excel sheet, and it gives you all the information of 
how many, you know, if they're getting paid annually or weekly, what their day rates are. And, and it really gives you a good perspective if you're coming up and you're new as an editor, like what you should be charging. So definitely look at that. If you're really trying to gauge what you should be charging, if you have certain clients and you're just starting, definitely look at that document. It is like gold for people coming up. There is a ton that goes into being an assistant editor, and I hope I laid it all out for you. But be sure to check out the other videos about being an editor, becoming an editor, and the video on the demo reel. It's gonna be super useful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you found this video useful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please comment below. And that is it for now. I shall see you next time.